Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Phyrexian Control. Welcome back, everybody, to It Resolves. And yes, I know it's been a while since you have seen my beautiful face. I have been gone uh, for quite some time, unfortunately doing a lot of work stuff. I'm actually about to head out again, but I wanted to get at least a handful of videos in. That way, John's not stuck doing all the work. So, John, thank you so much, my man. I know he's been working hard to, t to stay on top of not only videos, but also, of course, the live stream. Also, do want to remind you, the giveaway announcement for Dominaria United went out last Saturday. If you'd like to check that out, uh, I believe our winner was Jack Hall, who was a Patreon member. So congratulations, Jack. Thank you so much, my man. Uh, we've already settled up with him. He is good to go. So uh, best of luck to everybody in the next giveaway. But let's talk about today's deck. This is a Phyrexian control deck, very Demir heavy control deck, uh, brought to you by Sonio. So Sonio, thank you so much for sharing this over on Aetherhub. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to be... Uh, jacking some people's lists while I'm saving time and trying to get some videos in to, uh, to help John out. So uh, I do apologize that I'm not creating too many at the moment, but uh, again, Sonia does a really good job and this deck is amazing. So basically like a lot of the, the standard elements here are just the control elements. So you'll notice a lot of things that you're probably very used to seeing. Uh, March of Wretched Sorrow cut down for some removal. We've also got the Meat Hook Massacre, which is a great sweeper. Uh, Rona's Vortex, which is, I think, very quickly becoming one of my favorite just tempo spells. I think this is just a really good card. Uh, and it does scale a little bit with that kicker cost, so I really like it for that reason. Uh, we do have Negate in here as well, so just to be able to deal with some of the, uh, the instant sorceries, planeswalkers, enchantments, all kinds of things on the opponent's side. Uh, the Tainted Indulgence is a phenomenal card draw uh, piece for us. It does fill up our graveyard a little bit, which is probably okay, uh, given we have the Cruelty of Gix as one of our big finishers. Uh, Silver Scrutiny, one of the combo pieces of this deck. So Sonio did build in a little bit of a combo piece to this. Uh, what this looks like uh, is, first of all, we've got a couple things. Jenga Taxis sitting at the top, obviously going to be doubling up some of our uh, instants and sorceries here. So hugely beneficial with anything like Silver Scrutiny. We're going to get to draw basically twice X, uh, which is really good if we play that as our first instant or sorcery. Uh, you can play this at instant speed, by the way. Uh, and then Invoke Despair is another combo piece, of course. So we can actually just use this as a game ending kind of card. We hit one Invoke Despair, the other one takes out any of the leftover stuff and deals a lot of extra life damage. Uh, I have very easily won just having a Jenga Taxis and throwing out an Invoke Despair. Uh, we also, though, have Shieldred, and this is why it's called Phyrexian Control, because between Shieldred as well as Jenga Taxis, we've got a pretty stacked deck with some Phyrexians. Uh, this is actually really going to help us gain some life with the Scrutiny as well as the Invoke Despair. But having both out at the same time is ridiculous. Uh, haven't gotten there yet, but I would imagine that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, we do have the Celestis here to help ramp us as well as just kind of dig further into the deck again it's a nice little combo piece to draw with shieldred as well and then like i said the cruelty of gix is here just to be able to pick apart the opponent's hand pick out any card from our deck that we might need uh and then of course reanimate either a shieldred a jenga taxis or in fact anything uh from any of any graveyard at all if the opponent has something really spicy that we want to take we can certainly do so uh as far as the land package goes nothing too crazy we do of course run some cycle lands just for some extra draw uh works great for this deck and then of course one of each uh or excuse me two of these and then one of the abandoned myers uh so that's the deck guys um i'm really excited for this i think it's going to be great uh i really really love the build and again thank you so much sonio and thank you to all of you guys for being patient i know i haven't been here very much this month it's been a busy one but we're gonna get there don't worry so let's go ahead let's jump into game one all right guys and here we are for game number one and how do we feel about this hand a uh, little sketchy, not gonna lie. Um, I don't hate it from the standpoint of if we get any land, we can use that Silver Scrutiny to just draw further into the deck. Uh, but we're pretty far away from two of the cards here. We do have a little bit of tempo, so we could probably get away with it. I don't love it. Uh, I'll be honest. Um, I think I'm gonna try it, though. <laughs> You know what? We're here to have fun, uh, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna just have some fun, guys. We'll see if this actually works out. Um, I will go ahead and say, in practice, I've played two games with this deck so far. Won both of them. Um, 
I have learned that I am not always the best at seeing the correct line with this deck. Uh, and what I mean by that is you just have to be very aware of the amount of mana that you have, and in particular counting up a Jenga Taxis first, and then being able to play something like an Invoke Despair. Uh, something along those lines is always really beneficial for a deck like this, and so you just have to be very careful about it. Uh, I think what we're going to do is just bounce this uh, pre-combat. Um, hopefully they just play something else here. We could maybe bounce both of them. They just kind of reset the uh, the board here. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and bounce you. Um, and then I don't love this, but we're going to do it. We're just going to be overly aggressive and bounce everything. <laughs> uh, interesting. Okay. Um, well, with that in mind, I think we can just wait and Tainted Indulgence. What we're kind of positioning them into is a place where they basically just have to replay the Stormseeker and they may not have much else. Uh, and so that actually is really helping us quite a bit. The Tainted Indulgence should be able to draw us into a couple of lands here as well, uh, which will just get us into a really nice spot. This is phenomenal, actually. We just get to negate that. Even better. Uh, I am perfectly happy with that. That's great, actually. Uh, cool. So now, again, we're just basically in wait mode. Uh, we can kind of just see what they do and potentially work around that. I'm surprised they went this route and not Stormseeker. If they have another land, it makes sense, but it looks like they don't, uh, which is fine by me. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, I think we'll discard one of the two scrutinies here. As much as I don't want to, of course, um, I think that that's probably just the correct play. Uh, let's... I think just wait, uh, and we'll get to March of Wretched Sorrow on probably just the uh, the Lord of Ovenwald here. I think that's probably going to be the best bet, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, there's no sense in rushing. It is instant speed, of course, so um, yeah, okay. So I am actually just going to go ahead and do this. Uh, we'll gain a little bit of life out of the deal as well. And you do have to, to keep in mind here, guys, we are well into the mid to late, I mean, not late, late game, but we're into the mid game here. We're at 18. <laughs> uh, we're doing okay. Uh, it's not perfect, don't get me wrong, but it's not bad. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so I'm gonna go this route. Uh, I am just gonna play it for the initial one. Uh, assuming that we'll be able to get something out of the hand here, and it looks like we are, so that's quite good. Next turn, of course, we'll be able to search up whatever we need, uh, and I'm interested to see what we get here. Uh, Unnatural Moonrise is really good. That's a great way for them to power some stuff out here. Hate that Cutdown really isn't all that helpful at the moment, uh, but what's kind of nice is if we... Yeah, so truthfully, this is going to be really odd, I think the correct play is a land. <laughs> you guys are gonna hate me for that. Uh, but the reality is we have to get stuff off the field here. We could have very easily gotten a march, uh, but I think the land sets us up better for future turns. So keeping in mind here, the march would have solved that problem. That's perfectly fine. It would not have gotten us out of this long-term issue of not having enough black mana. Uh, and so I think this is just the best play we've got. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. The The life loss is definitely not ideal, but it's okay. All right. Um, I mean, I suppose we'll just take this. Uh, at the very least, this gives us a blocker, which is quite nice. I think I am going to go ahead and Tainted Indulgence preemptively here. Um, while I certainly don't love doing this, we kind of just have to find something. Uh, Shieldred is something. Um... But do we need to leave up the cut down? I think we just need to leave up the negate here. Uh, that trample damage is the important piece, uh, and certainly we can't allow them to, to trample through. Uh, ideally, too, I mean, they'll probably try and wolf strike this turn, right? Yeah. Uh, deal damage, yeah. So I think they're gonna just go ahead and wolf strike. Um, we will go ahead and counter that. So at the very least, what we're able to do is potentially save ourselves a little bit of damage here. Um, and at least we're on the same day-night cycle. Next turn, we've got Shieldred plus a Silver Scrutiny. So we do have a way of gaining some life. We just kind of have to keep ourselves in here. Um, so 
Let's see what we do. They're certainly gonna play this, I assume. Um, is this instant? No, it is sorcery speed. That's actually pretty crucial for us here. Uh, sure. That's scary. Uh, so we literally have to block this. That's all they're attacking with. I'm gonna try and cut down before we go to blocks. That's weird. Sure. Okay. I mean, I assumed they would do that, but that's... Huh. Okay. So I guess we should have done that pre-damage. I'm not sure, but oh well. It is what it is. I think that was a bit of a misplay, but uh, I think they potentially misplayed. They could have done this to draw a card and give trample. They also could have just attacked with everything. Uh, I mean, we're, we're pretty locked in at that point, so seems kind of interesting. But whatever. All right, let's go ahead and get Shieldred down here. I will go ahead and throw the Scrutiny out for two, given we don't have anything else we can really do. Uh, let's make sure we've got that life gain now. Uh, so this is going to put us up to eight, uh, which is quite helpful. They also can't deal with Shieldred quite yet. And we did get a Meat Hook Massacre, so that's actually huge. That is going to give us the opportunity of just sweeping the board as needed. Uh, and so that's pretty massive. Uh, we might lose Shieldred here, but I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, I, I don't want to, of course. Next turn, we could just Silver Scrutiny for, like, a lot, uh, and gain quite a bit of life and really get out of range. However, I, I would rather, I think, sweep their board, uh, to not allow them the opportunity to attack in at all. I don't know. We'll see. I'm assuming they've got a potential way to just deal with Shieldred here, though. Sure. That's cool. Uh, yeah, it's very good. I'm curious to see where they throw the plus two here. Uh, we do just have death touch, so it's worth noting that as long as they don't have first strike, I don't particularly care. Uh, yep. Hmm. That last card worries me. I think this is the safest play. Um, not positive, I'll be honest, but I do think we have to do this block and not this block. Okay. Yeah. So we could have blocked there most likely. Uh, truthfully, I don't think it would have mattered too much. However, I really didn't love the idea of leaving some, basically leaving six power coming through and not really having a way to deal with it. Uh, and so I think that was probably the best bet. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so they can activate this again. So it is worth noting that we need to sweep for more than just one, uh, which will tie up three of our mana and give us three left over. Uh, alternatively, we can just play Jenga Taxis uh, and bank on them not having much. This would also counter quite a bit. I'm going to take the high risk, high reward play. I think um, this is a bit of a sketchier play than just throwing out a Meat Hook Masker, but we'll see. Uh, what's nice about this is if they do have just like a pump up spell, other than, of course, just the, the plus two, plus two on the Snarling Wolf, uh, this will counter that first one. Uh, so they're not going to get just tons of activations here. And as long as they don't get up to five, well, four damage, but technically five all in all. Uh, I'm not all that concerned. I guess they could trade here, which is not good, um, but we'll see. Uh, I kind of wanted to get more creatures on the field before Meat Hook Massacring. I didn't know if just sweeping for a Snarling Wolf is really the best bet, if that makes sense. Uh, but we are going to be stuck into blocking this, uh, worth noting. We don't have a better option if they attack here. We just have to. Uh, yep. This is a lethal attack, uh, just just to clarify, given that they have two open mana. <laughs> uh, so that's fine. That gets countered, so that's great. <laughs> uh, I don't know that they knew that was going to happen. I don't think they would have attacked if they thought that was going to be the, uh, the right call. So <laughs> pretty happy with that, uh, actually. That's great. All right, sick. Uh, destroy target art. That can't do anything. This doesn't do anything. That's fine. Uh, yeah. That's really good. Um, okay. 
definitely just going to do this. Um, seems pretty straightforward. We're gonna gain a little bit of life out of the deal, and there we go, guys. We got the win. That was a little sketchy. I think we definitely misplayed a couple times, but that was a good game. We got there. So definitely love that. Let's jump into game two. This month's Patreon rewards features some of the most impactful lotuses in Magic's history. Check out all the details and sign up at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, everybody, here we are for game number two. Um, and I mean, again, we're kind of in a weird spot, but I will try it. Uh, I'm not overly optimistic, given the fact that we've only got Arona's Vortex. Truthfully, this is probably a send back, but it's all good. We'll figure it out. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Um, might be worth it to play the mire i'm not really sure we don't have a ton of things to hit shieldred is the biggest and we got shieldred now so that's helpful uh did misplay a little bit there we should have actually played the swamp uh 100 that was a misplay but that's okay uh let's go ahead and i'm gonna be proactive here knowing that we're gonna throw the shieldred down this upcoming turn um I think this is just probably the best play for us at the moment. Uh, it gets a good threat down for them to have to deal with. They're only at a couple mana, so they really don't have a ton. Uh, three mana now, but I think that's a good a good setup for us. Um, yeah, it looks like they just have the zombies, so that's really good. Excellent. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw this out, uh, and I think we just hold this up. We can attack, so I suppose I will. Um, I think that's fine. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, we can always bounce this. So, like, I think at this point, we're just in a racing scenario. I don't actually think we have to worry too much about anything else. Um, I would very much love to get a black source here. It turned out that playing that uh, island really didn't matter because we didn't have another source to play. <laughs> uh, so it, it wasn't that big of a deal, but uh, it was definitely worth considering. One, two, three, four, five... Um, I think what we're going to do is throw this back. We do want to keep the damage going, so I'd prefer just going ahead and doing this. We'll definitely save that for uh, the, the adversary. The thing about the adversary, guys, it does have death touch, uh, and so that's a very easy way for us to not be able to attack in. Uh, and again, we're basically a turn away from just kind of winning off of that, so... I'm going to take that opportunity if we can. Uh, instead, though, they go with the Undead Butler. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, not sure if that's good or not. I kind of don't think so. Um, so, again, I think we just go here. Kill this. They're going to get a Decayed Zombie out of the deal, um, but they actually... They can't block with that. Uh, and so at this point, it's a matter of if they've got like a Rona's Vortex, they could try and bounce the Shieldred, but we actually get to leave up the negate here regardless. Uh, and so kind of doesn't matter. Um, they really shouldn't have attacked with that scab, I don't think. I think that was definitely a mistake. Excellent, we're gaining some more life. Let's attack in and this is guaranteed win. We did it. That was a super clean game, guys. That was awesome. Sonio, this deck is killing it, my man. Uh, let's go ahead. We got time for a game three. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys. Here we are for our last game. Definitely going to have to be our last game. How do we feel? I think fine. Let's go ahead and throw the Shipwreck Marsh out here. Normally, I would actually go with the Swamp first, given we have a cut down. Uh, but I'm kind of okay with just seeing where we go here. We definitely need some more lands, but we have got a phenomenal grip here. Uh, in terms of just really strong options uh, for later. So we'll see. Um, do we actually need to throw that out now? Yeah, I mean, I guess we can. It's not really going to hurt. Um, cut down is one of those cards. I will just go ahead and say that uh, I, I find it best to use it when you can use it uh, and not wait to see if you have a better target. I think a lot of times you run into a scenario where you just don't find a target. Uh, and so I'd prefer to just go ahead and get it down. I'm also going to be really tough on these, like, anything that's going to draw them cards, anything like that, especially given they're stuck on mana. Uh, let's make it difficult for them. Uh, and so negating that Reckoner Bankbuster is 100% the way to go, just to make that challenging. 
Uh, obviously, a meat hook for zero is fine. I don't really care. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> pretty straightforward plays here. We're going to get rid of the meat hook. We're going to draw two cards. We're going to gain four life out of the deal uh, and be able to attack in for four. They're down to 10. We're up to 26. We have a meat hook in hand. Excuse me, they're down to eight. Uh, we also have a silver scrutiny that, as long as we have shielded, will gain us quite a bit of life. Now, this is going to solve that uh, that shielded problem that they are facing at the moment. Uh, but that's kind of okay. Uh, huh. That's a solution, isn't it? Um, I do like that quite a bit. Uh, so, basically what I'm thinking about here is um, we can just immediately reanimate uh, the, the Shieldred, which will kind of just put them in a tricky scenario of they're still going to have to re-answer the Shieldred. Uh, alternatively, we can just dig out another Invoke Despair, and that might be the safer play. Um, I'm actually going to skip the round one here. Uh, the reason being, just to be very clear, um, this is a mono black deck, very clearly. A lot of the creatures in this deck are obviously very good, um, but the solution is pretty clear for us that if we just use a... I don't... How do we lose this game? I think we'll throw the Celestis back. Um, obviously, they're stuck on mana. They're only going to be able to play most likely one creature. Uh, Invoke Despair gets rid of a Planeswalker, a creature, and an enchantment on the opponent's side of the field. Now we've got the Cruelty of Gix as well, so we're going to be able to reanimate a creature, get rid of, if they have a creature, the creature they play, as well as the Liliana. Uh, and this is great because we're not targeting the Graveyard Trespasser. Uh, now, they did get rid of our Shieldred, which is annoying, uh, but we get their Tenacious Underdogs, so we had a backup there, and that's kind of all that needed to happen. So, let's go ahead and Invoke Despair, getting a couple things off the field here. Uh, and they're down to one mana. They could have a cut down, sure. Uh, but they are very quickly losing resources, in my opinion. Uh, and we do have Jenga Taxis live next turn, which should be able to just kind of take care of most of what they're doing. Um, we also just have Meat Hook, so... Cool. Um, I think we definitely Meat Hook first. Uh, we can't let a Shieldred stick around. We just can't. Uh, the reality is we're trying to draw a lot of extra cards, and if we double up on any of our card draw with Jenga Taxis, we'll end up killing ourselves. Uh, and so I think the reality is we have to remove Shieldred before we can do anything else. Uh, unfortunately, if they have a backup Shieldred, that's going to suck, but looks like they don't. So uh, Jenga Taxis should be able to come down here, do some major work, uh, especially given they just don't have a lot of stuff in their hand. What's important to note here, guys, is Jenga Taxis counters that first instant or sorcery spell. That's a pretty back-breaking thing for a deck that is trying to play things like Invoke Despair, which is going to take up all of their mana in a particular turn. And so uh, we should, theoretically, be able to kind of deal with this. So this gets countered. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, that just whiffed completely. Uh, again, I feel like people don't seem to understand how Jenga Taxis maybe works, uh, which is kind of interesting because it's been around for a little while now. Um, but I'll take it. All right, so how do we want to finish the game is the takeaway. Uh, so they really don't have a great option here. Um, so I think the first thing is we're actually going to attack uh, and force the issue. We'll see if they actually do anything. It looks like not. That's fine. Um, let's do this. Uh... Now the question is, do we just want to go for this and get Shieldred? And I kind of do. I like the Shieldred play here. Um, not 100% sure this is right, to be honest, <laughs> but it's really cool. And it's a great way to end this, uh, given the fact that we've got both of our uh, really big Phyrexians on the table here. That's really awesome. Um, the great thing here is we pass and we win. <laughs> Uh, and truthfully, oh no, we don't. Excuse me. This is net neutral. Excuse me. Uh, all right. Let's just draw for what, two? It's going to get copied. Uh, and so we'll basically net nothing here. 
uh, which is fine. I don't particularly care. The the multiple shieldreds on the battlefield is actually quite funny. Uh, okay, that's game winning. Uh, that's 100% game winning. So, we get to bounce shieldred. Uh, and just attack. And we win. There we go, guys. Undefeated run with this deck. That was amazing. Sonio, I can't thank you enough. Let's wrap this one up. All right, guys, so first and foremost, please give a huge shout out and go follow Sonio or subscribe to Sonio if you are not already. He does amazing decks. Uh, he puts some amazing ones together, including this one. We got an undefeated run with this deck, guys. That is insane. Uh, the power level of this deck is quite high, in my opinion, uh, at least for best of one, because you have so many tools that are able to not only deal with so many things on the board, but of course gain you a lot of life and get you back into a game that you may not not have had, you know, like a strong start to or whatever. Uh, and so truthfully, this was phenomenal. I absolutely, uh, highly, highly recommend trying this deck out. Uh, and again, Sonio, I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, one thing I will say, again, I am going to be out again uh, for another week. Uh, just due to work stuff, I'm going to be out for a conference. Uh, I do apologize, guys. I'm going to do the best I can to get as many videos recorded as I can, but I probably won't make it through the full week. John's been doing a great job, so a huge thank you to John for keeping us honest and keeping us up there. Uh, but I unfortunately, I, I just don't have time. I'm going to be out of town in Orlando for a while. So uh, I do appreciate everybody being so supportive while I have been gone. It's been really, really nice. I promise October I will be back. Uh, this is going to take me roughly till the end of September. So I'm going to do the best I can to get everything back. And thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. I love you all. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys again very soon.